Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the left-hand side. You just uh, hit that button. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. Get it for six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred and ninety nine dollars or twenty two percent, and you get it for one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred and ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee, folks. Okay, so you're going to get a great newsletter. Basil has about twelve archives on there. You're going to understand how Basil looks at the market every day, and you're going to be able to ride that wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good, thank you. I guess you didn't know your name's Tim Ord, huh? <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe I did that. Wait a Is this Tuesday? Was no, exactly. Tuesday? Exactly. I thought it was Thursday. I know. So trust me. He's, well, I love it. So, what's yeah. happening in this market, Basil? So, I tell you something that's uh, to me. Uh, this is a really big challenge for a couple of reasons. One is, for subscribers, we've we've not shorted the Dow for quite some time. We've been long. We've, we've enjoyed it. We have our core positions from this past October, plus the one going all the way back to 2020. So that's a core position. We've traded around it. But we did take a short position uh, a couple of days ago. And so far, that's held. But I'll explain what I'm looking at here. So for some time, I'd say for uh, since May. In fact, I'll show you this chart right now. I use one particular indicator, the 914. It's a nine period moving average over the 14. It goes green and under it goes pink. And I call it the, uh, you know, like the Federal Reserve is the bank of last re resort. So I call this the indicator of last resort. When everything else is giving you sell signals, if this is holding strong, you've got to have the patience. So I, in a way, I didn't have the patience. I used some other technique to start the short position. But this here, the gray line, the thick gray line, is the price of the Dow. The green line is a nine-period moving average. The black line is a 14-period moving average. Okay. I'll go through some of this in my show tomorrow. I did it today. I'll do it again tomorrow because it's going to be really important. And Thursday, we'll see what happens. But look. There's one little S right there, and that says to, uh, to short, and when it's L, it means to go long. And if you look at this, this is way back. I showed this as a daily Dow chart, 5 3 23. It's the 3rd of May at 33,684. The Dow is a thick gray line. 90 in May is the green or pink. That means if it goes over the black line, the 14 period moving average, it changes color on the upside to green, on the downside to pink. So it changed. Because there was a very sharp pullback. Here's the price of the Dow. And I was saying, uh, look at the way the uh, there was a deterioration in the distance between the green and the black period moving average right there in April going into May. And that there was a sharp pullback. Would there be a pink change? Well, there was a pink change. When we did this, as we were coming into this area right here into July, um, there was another sharp decline but the strength of this nine period moving average said uh uh i'm not changing to pink yet even though it looked like it was absolutely about to do it it didn't do that it went green and here's the price of the dow it's still very well above the nine and the nine's above 14. so in that sense the other technique that i used uh, using on balance volume and some other things was uh, was premature based on this reading. And if you look at the S&P, let's just go to the S&P, same technique, just making this a thick gray line. This is the price of the, the closing price of the S&P. <clears throat> and here's the green line, here's the black line. It's a lot closer, but it only went negative in May. The, the Dow went made negative for quite a bit. Look, this went for one day, and then it switched to green. Look at the QQQ. Same thing, one day. And this rode that degree. line, yeah. And look, it's getting closer and closer. If, in fact, the, the uh, QQQ index 100 trading vehicle starts to trade below, it would probably have to go down to 371. It's at 379, probably even lower than that, for that green line to go pink. But it's getting closer and closer. But you can't, 
you should presuppose that it's going to happen. You've got to wait for it to actually happen. So I've kind of jumped the gun a little bit. We'll see what happens over the next day or two. But that's that's the way I'm looking at this. And this so I thought I'd just demonstrate. I like to show things that work out well. I like to show things that are, are where I've gone against my actual technique. And then sometimes I use a combination of techniques. But this is the one that says, I'll go back to the Dow right now. The Dow is up uh, at 63 points at this at this stage. And you can see, to get that gray line to come all the way down, to change that light green, nine period moving average to close under the pink, uh, under the black to go pink, you'd probably have to go to 34,500, 34,200. So I talk about something else very often, and that, let me just get out of this. I want to show you something else. Um, I talk about the dark news cloud cover, and I've had webinars, I've, I've discussed this many times, and what I say is that most of the time, there is bad news sitting out there, but the market just ignores it. And then the same news on another day could be really important. So I called this back in November of 2022. I said, there's a dark news cloud cover, and it's going to be a resistance, but I had small little squares. I just made this one very long one to say, hey, I think now we're getting closer to maybe taking out that high, the 34,712 higher back in December of 22. And now we've gone above it for a number of bars. This is a daily chart. One, two, three, four, five, six bars now. We're above that resistance. So that says to me, are we, are we really looking at all the negatives out there sort of dissipating? And now this is a great support area instead of a resistance area. So those are the things that I'm going to be tackling over the next coming in the coming weeks because what we're looking at is some of the stocks that have been really fantastic are now starting to stall. And some of the stocks that were just horrible, like a triple M, has suddenly come alive, or even the XLF. So this is a, I usually talk about a bifurcated market. It's like a tri or quadruple bifurcated market because there are now so many sectors that are doing different things. So I've got my prices that I'm looking at, and we've built up a little cash position here because I think there's going to be some, for instance, the artificial intelligence area, there's some, some weaknesses crept in. We've had some stocks that have done really well, waiting for them to pull back a little more so we can add back some that we've taken off. So this is a fascinating period just in terms of looking at the structure of the market and all those, it's like a chessboard looking at all these different moves that are going on. But what I always like to say is that if there is one, if there's an area that can take over what was str strength as weakness comes into the strong stocks and the weak stocks can start to move up, that gives you a nice counterbalance. So I don't see any major sell-off right here. I don't see that. I do see the signs of uh, some kind of a sudden sell-off, and it could be Fed inspired. We'll see what happens. So parameters are clear. I'll go through them again in my show at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. They had open and call, and then you are off to the races. Basil, you have a great night, a safe night, and, of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks, and come right back.